Oh my goodness. There, hey, voila. Okay, now we're working. Oh, that doesn't look very sharp, does it? Okay, well, I wonder if I do this, that would help. Okay, so here's what I would do. Do you see any change in amplitude? No, because there's not a number in front of sign. So what does that tell me as far as my amplitude? My sine curve will have a high value of and a low value of. So that part of my graph is not going to change. What I need to figure out is how this makes the period change. So my period can be found by taking 2 pi and dividing it by my b. And what did they give me for a b? One third. Now, how do you take two pi and divide it by one third? You can multiply by the reciprocal. Remember, this is the same thing as two pi divided by one third if I wrote it out horizontally instead of vertically. So that's two pi times three over one. What's my period? Six pi. Okay, now here's how this is going to help me, okay? I am going to need to mark off my angles on my x-axis. I'm going to mark off my ratio values, what the, the sine values will actually equal on my y-axis. And I know for my y-axis, I'm going to go up to a high of positive 1, down to a low of negative 1. If you want to put some other marks on there for other units, you can. But those are going to be the only ones we need. Now, since going all the way out to 6 pi is going to be one complete period, and since sine is a holla, if this is at 0 and this is now at 6 pi, shouldn't it be back on an axis at the midpoint between these two? How do you get the midpoint between two numbers? Add them together and divide by 2. So 0 plus 6 pi is? And what's 6 pi divided by 2? 3 pi. So here's what I know. I'm going to have an axis point here, an axis point here, and an axis point here. What I've got to figure out is where the high point and the low points occur. And don't they occur halfway between these two? So if I add 0 plus 3 pi, that's what? It's 3 pi. And when you divide it by 2, you would get 3 pi over 2. So halfway between here is 3 pi over 2. Aren't you glad you're in here right now? Okay. And that's a high point. And then if you add these two together and divide by two, that'll tell you where your low point is. So what's three pi plus six pi? Nine pi over two. That's where my low point occurs. And now I can sketch my curve. Does that make sense? <coughs> If you know that little trick, then it lets you make the adjustment on the period here. Okay? Now, does it look like the same shape as the sine curve? Yes, but a regular sine curve would have ended here at 2 pi. So this has been stretched out this way. It made the period longer. All right? So here's the thing as long as the B value is something between 0 and 1, what did it do to our graph? There you go. So when you've got a horizontal stretch, a stretch of your graph when B is between 0 and 1. What do you think happens if your B is greater than 1? It shrinks it. Yeah, this stretched it out if it was a fractional value between 0 and 1. 
if it ends up being a number that is greater than one, then you get a horizontal shrink. In other words, it'll make the curve tighter. It, it will oscillate faster, we'll use that. So if B is greater than one, that's gonna be what happens. Now let's practice another one. Um, let's take Y equals cosine of one half X and let's do it over a period and graph it. Now, can you tell me we've got two changes we've talked about. Do we have any change in amplitude here? No, because there's not a number in front of cosine. Do I have a change in period? Yes. And how do you know that? Because you have a number that is before the x. x is being multiplied by a number, so that's changed my period. So let's calculate what the new period would be. How do we find it? 2 pi divided by 2 pi divided by 1 half. If I multiply by the reciprocal, would you say that's the same thing as two pi times two over one, which is four pi? I know you gotta be careful, because you're especially with these fractions, you may be tempted to just multiply by the fraction, but you actually have to multiply by the reciprocal. So this tells me my period is four pi. Okay, I'm curious, do I have a volunteer who wants to try to label the axis. Let's do it this way. Somebody come up to the board and we'll use that and let's see if you can label. Jimmy? Ah, how about. Um, yeah, I will, but I. Well, come on down. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, the more Thanks, that Gary. you practice, <laughs> the more that you practice, the, the better you're going to be at this. So we can meet. Okay. So we got this thing graphed. I'm going to put it on my paper where we said if it's a period of four pi, then I set that up there. And we talked about because it's cosine, we use holla. We're going to put the ratio here, which was one for pi. Axis was, y'all tell me again, zero, then, 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 and then we need to get our x-axis, which is our angle, and that's where we said, we know it starts at zero, but now since the period is four pi, instead of ending at two pi, this thing will end at four pi. And then Josh, you did a good job of explaining, I know that the one that goes in the middle is going to be halfway between these two, that's gotta be two pi. Because if we add zero plus four pi, we get four pi, divide it by two, you get two pi. Now if we get the midpoint between these two, what was halfway between zero and two pi? Pi. And what's halfway between two pi and four pi? Three, Three pi. So we got these listed as our scale on our y-axis, which is our ratio, we put one. Y'all hear music? Okay, all right. Uh, okay, yeah, I was, get, I was getting a little concerned there. Maybe I, I'm, you know, not seeing clearly and I'm hearing things. I'm, I'm slipping fast. Okay, so putting my points on there, this is my ratio value, a high of one when I'm at zero on the x-axis. When I go to pi on the x-axis, my ratio value is zero. Then we came to negative one when we were at two pi. We went back to the axis to zero at three pi and we ended pi. And that's how we got the graph. And we could do more than one period if it requested, but it only requested one. So it, we got the complete cycle there. Now, here's sort of a summary of what we've done so far with sine and cosine. If these are the only kind of changes that we see in the equation, then the first thing I would do is find the period, and what was the little formula I told you you could use to find if the period has changed? It's what? Two, two pi over b. Very good, if I see a number in front of the x, that means I've got a change in the period. Start at zero on the x-axis and lay off a distance of whatever two pi over b equals. So that's what we just did. 
When we found we had a period of four pi, we marked that before we did anything else. I need to divide the interval into how many equal parts? How many, how many marks did he put on the x-axis when he put this on the board? Four, four equal parts. Now I wanna evaluate the function for each of the, even though it's four equal parts, there's actually five different x values, right? Think about holla, that's five letters, a holla, that's five letters. So I'm gonna have five x values that need to be identified. And these are going to be either max points, if it's a high, min points, minimums, if it's a low, or it's gonna be an x-intercept. That's gonna be where it crosses the x-axis. After you get those identified and plotted, uh, then you will make sure that when you plot them, if you had a change in amplitude, make sure that you reflect that on your scale. We're gonna put all this together here in a second. So it would mean if that A is not one, we've gotta make sure that we adjust the scale on the uh, ratio to reflect the amplitude. And then if it tells you to draw more than one period, you can just add on additional X values. Now, here's one that puts it all together. Question, do I have a volunteer who'd be willing to come to the board and do what Josh did, just did for us, or do you want me to do this one with you? What do you say? It is different because it has, <laughs> well, it has both pieces. So why don't we do this one together, and then I'm gonna have some others that I'm gonna let you guys come to the board to do. All right, now, this one is going to have one little quirky thing in it we haven't seen on any of the other examples. What do you notice about the amplitude? There's a negative sign there. Remember we talked, I think, about that negative sign actually does something different to the graph. Do you remember what it does? Like yes, it reflects over the x-axis. So this is where we want to be really careful that we pay. So I want to show you how I would do the adjustment on this. First of all, it tells me, go ahead and find the period. So do you see a number in front of the x? The, yes, my b value is 2. So if my period is 2 pi over b and my b is 2, what does that make my period? It's just one pi. So instead of completing a cycle in two pi radians, it's only going to take me one pi radians to get this thing finished. Okay? Now, I notice it's a sine curve. So what is it I remember to be able to graph sine? Starting, did you say holla or a holla? Start with the A. So I'm going to use a holla because this is sine. And here's what I, I would need to do. Up here for my ratio, I have an amplitude of negative three. Exactly. When we get ready to fill this out in a second, we're gonna multiply what we would have in a normal one by negative three, and we're gonna write those values up here, okay? Now, let's go ahead and see if we can get all the intervals, because I know I'm gonna start for my angles, or my x values. We start at the axis, which is zero, uh, or the origin, I should say, and we're gonna to go to pi for one complete period. That means if I get the midpoint of these two, I'm on the axis where? One pi over two, mm -hmm. or one half pi. You can think of it either way. Now, can you figure out or find what would be the midpoint between zero and pi over two? Because if I take pi over two and I divide it by two, that's the same thing as pi over two times one half, isn't it? Basically, we're gonna take whatever we, we get when we add these together and multiply it times one half. So this is gonna be pi over four. What's gonna be the midpoint between pi over two and pi? 
good because if I take pi over 2 and I add pi to it, I'm adding 2 pi over 2 to it because I have to have a common denominator if I'm adding fractions. That's going to be 3 pi over 2, right? I completely did not do it that way. I just like, I was like, what equals 75% of 1? Yeah. Like three I mean, for those of you who are kind of uh, cool with fractions, you're going to be able to do this in your head, and that's fine. If you're not doing it in your head, the process you want to use is add these two together, and adding these two together means I get 3 pi over 2, and then I'm going to multiply it by 1 half, and that's going to be exactly what he said, which is 3 pi over 4. Okay, you do not have to write out that work, you just have to make sure you know how to find 3 pi over 4. Are we good? Okay, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to fill in the missing marks. So there's a halfway point, and then I get halfway between each of these, and I know that's going to be pi over 4. This is going to be pi over 2. This is going to be 3 pi over 4. And so I've got my scale on the x-axis taken care of. Now, I've got to find what the ratios need to be, and this is where because of a change in amplitude, I'm going to have to be real careful. Normally, a uh, holla means that the sine of zero is what? Zero. The sine, uh, when I move over here to H, that would be one. A is back at the axis, which is zero. What's the low value? Negative one, and the axis is zero. All of these values now need to get multiplied by negative three because I have a change in amplitude. So where will I be at an angle measure of zero? Anything times zero is still zero. All right, where will I be on my high point now? And technically, it's not a high point anymore because this thing's been reflected. It turns it into a low point. But I can still use these values to help me see where to put my points. Is that making sense? Mm -hmm. So now if you multiply negative 3 times 0, we're back at 0. What would I get here? Mm -hmm. Because a negative times a negative gives me a positive, and then I'll be back at 0. So if I mark this, I can see I need to go up to a positive 3, down to a negative 3. One, two, three. One, two, three. And this is what I'm going to follow so I can get it on my graph. Start at zero, go down to negative three, go back to zero, go up to positive three, and back to zero. And that would be the graph for this. Now, I want us to check it and see. I'm just going to show you. If I go here, I'm going to turn this off, and I'm going to clear this out and clear this out, and I want to type in negative 3 times the sine of 2x, and I'm going to double check We'll put it in radiant mode um, if it's not already. Oops. No. Yeah, it's in radiant mode. And I want to graph this. Since it's a trig function, I'm going to do zoom 7. Now, this is giving me more than one period. What we want to focus on is this part. Does that match my curve? Yes. Hopefully, I'll move it over here so you can see a little better. That's kind of cool, isn't it? And we were able to figure that out simply by analyzing the things we already knew. Now, um, there are a few more things. We kind of, we're not getting things quite as fast as I'd hoped we would. Um, so we've got another example here, and this is explaining how you could go from the graph to figure out what the equation is. So we're gonna wanna look at those. Um, and that means we're going to need to pick up with that on Tuesday. What we will add on to this when you guys come back on Tuesday is we'll also talk about the other kinds of transformations, the translations that could occur. Because you could actually shift the graph up or down. You could shift it to the right or the left. And so just like we figured out how to make adjustments here, 
we're going to figure out how to make those adjustments as well. So 6-3, hopefully you'll be able to get most of it done. Um, come back with questions if you have them. But then in the next class, we've got to get 6-4. I'm hoping 6-5 and 6-6 six, six, um, will probably go a little bit faster. I'm kind of hoping we might be able to do those together. But we've got to get this test in before spring break. So that gives us one, two, three class meetings to finish the notes and do the review. Um, there will be a quiz on 6-1 through 6-3, but obviously we need to finish 6-3 to do it. So you guys have a safe and happy weekend. I will see you on Tuesday. Stay dry.